Hello video game enthusiasts, welcome back to yet another Bolt Visual Scripting tutorial on my 2D player controller. My name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build off of a regular combat system to implement a melee combo attack using Bolt. If you have no idea what Bolt is, and or everything I'm saying sounds quite bizarre, I would strongly recommend going to my channel and learning how to use Bolt with an easier build. If you don't have a melee attack for your character, just go back to video 9 in my complete 2D player controller series. If, on the other hand, you've already been following along, or you'd like to know how to implement a combo attack to your existing build, then let's go ahead and knock this tutorial out. By the end of today's tutorial video, you should have a 1-2-3 combo system that is time sensitive, meaning that if you don't click the attack button in fast enough succession, the attack just reverts back to 1. For this build, you're going to need to make a couple macros in advance. First of all, get your ground attack macro that we made in the last video handy because we're going to make some changes to it today. You're also going to need a swing add macro, which this one should be pretty easy to set up. And you're also going to need a combo macro. So go ahead and build that on your screen and continue when you're ready. You're also going to need to go to your player game object and add a couple more variables. You're going to need the attack count variable. This is an integer and go ahead and set that to zero. And then you're going to need one called max combo delay. That is a float, and go ahead and set that to 1. In the last tutorial video, I had you go ahead and make an attack 1 animation and go ahead and set that up. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to need to go ahead and set up an attack 2 and an attack 3. And if you don't have these sprites, there is a link in the description below. You are also going to need to set up two new animation parameters. I had you set up attack 1 as a trigger last time. You're going to need to set up attack 2 and attack 3. When you get those animations set up, you should put them right here in your base layer. Just go ahead and grab them and drop them into combat mode. Once you get them into combat mode, you're going to find them somewhere around here. Just grab them and drop them into ground attack. I have my ground attack, attack tree set up just like this. Attack 1, attack 2, attack 3. From any state, I make transitions to attack 1, 2, and 3. And then I make uh, transitions from attack 1 to uh, to our sword idle, our combat walk, combat run. Same thing for attack 2 and 3. The following are the transitions that you're going to need. On our attack 2 and attack 3, make sure the loop time is off. The way that you set that is clicking, double clicking on your item. Just make sure that this checkbox right here is checked off. And going back to our animations, you are going to need to make sure that all of them have an exit time of 1. Uh, you set that right, uh, let me go back here, you set that right uh, here, make sure it has an exit time, it has an exit time of 1. All of the transition durations and offsets are set to 0. Uh, this is where you're going to set those conditions, just add a little plus sign. Uh, you're going to set up the following conditions, and when uh, you go ahead and pause your screen, go ahead and get these now, when you get these done, we will continue with this build. Moving into the bolt side of things, we're going to go inside our state graph under our combat mode. We're going to double click on our combat mode and we are going to set this variable somewhere in combat mode. I just have mine set right up here. doesn't really matter where you place it, but you are going to need this. What this is going to do is going to set a scene variable for us that's going to go across all the scenes and just name it last click. The next thing we're going to need to do is go over here to where we had a ground attack already made in the last video and we're going to make just a few changes to this. First of all, we're going to delete this set trigger and uh, this ground attack. We're going to use that in a different place. Just go ahead and slide over the grounded and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to just move in uh, this, uh, this little uh, can attack um, check. So it's going to go from our mouse click to our branch and it's going to check whether or not we can attack before it ever goes into the grounded attack. Um, so um, we're going to do a ground check here. If grounded comes back as true, the reason we're doing this is because we're going to set up an air combo in the next video. So we'll have a ground attack and a, um, a uh, an air attack. So ground and air. Then we're going to do is we're going to take this little true with its grounded and we're going to come right up here to our combo. So I had you go ahead and make that. Uh, you can just go to our macros and under our player attack, I put mine under combat. And just grab it, uh, grab that combo and just drop it right there and just move it into the input. And then we're going to move in our ground attacks and we're going to place them right there. One, two, three. Now in this, uh, in this ground attack, you are going to go ahead and make a change. Uh, I, I believe you should have something that looks like this. 
Um, what I did, I'm just taking that out of here because we need that to run before we ever go into our ground or our air attack in the next video. We want to go ahead and set that now and just kind of move this over. Uh, if I get this little thing to resize, there you go. Just set it right there and um, we are taking that out and we are putting it down here. So it will check whether or not we can attack before it does anything, whether ground or the air. And um, let me just go ahead and uh, set up this combo for you, exactly how this works. You, you went ahead and made this, and let me try to explain it. Basically what's going on is whenever we get an input of a mouse click, it's going to check whether our uh, last click time is greater than our max combo delay. If you remember, on your player, I had you set a new variable, uh, max combo delay of one. The reason we're putting this in here is we want to uh, make it to where whenever we click in rapid succession, then we want it to go to a combo. But if I click and wait longer than a second, I want it to go back to number one in the list, the first attack. I don't want to attack later on and get some weird attack from number three. I want it to attack from attack one, uh, attack two, attack three in rapid succession. So we're going to go ahead and set that up and explain how this works. Um, so in this um, in this combat, I told you whenever you, we enter the combat state, I want you to go ahead and set a last click variable on the scene to a float of zero. In other words, uh, when was the last time we clicked? Well, when we enter the combat mode, what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, is the last time we clicked, so our get time, our game time, we're getting our game time, we're subtracting our last click time, and is that uh, less than the max combo delay? In other words, is the max combo delay greater than the difference between these two things, the get time and the last click time? If it is, well then what we're going to do is we're going to set our last click time to our current game time. Um, if it's not, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our attack count to zero, and then we're going to set our last click time to our game time. So you see the difference there. It's basically doing the same thing. But what this is doing is it's resetting our attack count to zero. The way we're keeping track of our swings is this attack count. So it will go one, two, three, or actually zero, one, two. And then it will reset back to zero when we get back down here. Listen, I know this is already kind of running long. I just don't want you to leave this video without first understanding how this combo system works because I know this can be a little confusing. So basically you have three attacks, right? You have an attack one, attack two, attack three. What I had you do is I had you set up a variable called attack count and set it to zero. And what we're doing in our game logic is we're saying that attack one equals zero, attack two equals one, and attack three equals two. So I know that's kind of confusing, but basically that's the way that lists work. I also had you set up two new variables, one called last click, it's actually a scene variable that you set up as you come into combat mode, remember on interstate, uh, last click equals zero, right? And then you also have a max delay of one second. So where does this variable come from, the time get time? Well, whenever you start the game, it starts counting up for the game time. That's just basically the way that game systems work. It's always counting the game time, and it's always moving forward because that's the way the time works. So what we're doing here is we're saying, get the game time, which is always counting up, and let's say we first click whenever it's 12.8 seconds in the game time. We've gone 12.8 seconds since the game has started. And it's going to check, well, when was the last time that we clicked our mouse? Well, we haven't clicked our mouse, so it's zero. Well, what was our max delay again? Our max delay was one second. So if this is, the, this is kind of a true or false statement here. Is this, the game time minus the last click time, greater or less than one? So this, this is actually written, it's 12.8 seconds, the game time minus the cl last click time, is this less than the max delay? No, it's not, right? Because 12.8 seconds is, is greater than one. So since this is false, what we're doing is we're saying, well, set attack count to zero, because that's the one we're doing here. We wanna run through our one, two, three system, set our attack time to zero, our attack count to zero, and then set our last click time to 12.8. 
right? So our last click time is now becoming our game time. And remember, our game time is always counting up. If this was true, then it would just attack and it would then set our last click time to 12.8. So the next time we click, let's say we click in rapid succession. Look, our game time has gone up by 0.3 seconds because we can click our mouse pretty dang quick. And then our last click time was 12.8. Well, 13.1 minus 12.8, is that less than or greater than 1? Is it less than 1? Yes, it is. Well, then go ahead and attack. And then it's going to set our last click time to our current game time, and then it's going to click again. So the way that you're doing that is you have a one second delay, and if this is ever not true, then what it's going to do is set our attack count back to zero. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, we're going to get the current attack Count. So we have our attack count set to zero, and uh, we're gonna if if a is equal to zero, then we're gonna go into this first swing ad. And inside this swing ad, what we're doing is basically saying, hey, um, are we swinging? Yes, we are swinging. And if we are, then um, then we're going to take our attack count. We are going to uh, then set the attack count to attack count plus one. So if it's zero, we're gonna make it one. If it's one, we're gonna make it two. Uh, and it's going to go out of this uh, macro. If it's false, if, uh, if our attack count does not equal zero, then it's going to go to the next one. And it's going to say, well, does it equal one? If it doesn't equal one, then it'll go to the next one. If it does, it'll go ahead and attack number two. If it is equal to two, which is the only option that we have because of the way we have this set, then it's going to set our trigger to attack three. And our animator here, it's going to say, hey, you just triggered attack three, so let's see the animation. When it is done, it's going to set our attack count back to zero. And uh, we have this set up in such a way that it will either be zero, one, or two. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Every time we swing our sword. What we should see at this point is that now whenever we start up our game and our attack happens, we should see uh, an attack one, attack two, and attack three. So the skeleton died there. Now, what we should also see is that if I don't click my sword fast enough, so that was one, 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 or one, two, three. Okay, you should now have a solid melee combo system. If you had any trouble at all with this build, be sure to hit me up on Discord. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the same system and make a distinction between a combo system on the ground and a combo system in the air with a ground slam at the end. Hopefully this was helpful for you. My name is Megahertz, and this is where we part ways. I'll see you in the next video.